Hi everyone, welcome back to The Learning Gardener and welcome to my garden. I thought we would do a end of summer tour, except that it's actually the second day of autumn, but there you go. So everything's looking lush and in desperate need of a mow, and today would actually be a perfect day to be in the garden, except I sliced my finger open a few days ago pretty messed up so I have to let it have a chance to heal so I can go to work in two days time and not get an infection. But let's do a garden tour and see where everything is at the end of summer. We're starting up on the deck this time and unfortunately I turned my mic off instead of on. We have a ton of seedlings up here that are beyond desperate to get into the ground. We've got some beautiful apricot cosmos and some violet queen uh, zinnias that have already started to flower in their little seedling trays and they desperately desperately need to get in the uh, in the ground. I've got a replacement salvia for one that uh, was killed with the lawnmower and um, there's a lot of things in these seedling trays that I don't actually know what they are anymore because I tried a method of marking the seedlings with a paddle pop stick and I can't read them anymore, but I am absolutely living for the combination of the Violet Queen Zinnia and the Apricot Cosmo. I've also got chilies and tomatoes and spaghetti squash that are all in theory ready to be planted, although the spaghetti squash is looking significantly worse for wear. I had started my uh, fall crops, my autumn crops, and they got raided by some critter, and so we have absolutely nothing ready to go in after the summer crops are coming out, which is a little bit unfortunate, uh, but there, <laughs> there's still plenty of work for me to do to get the existing seedlings that we've got ready to go and in the ground. Something else that is ready to go that I've never done before is... Uh, sweet potato slips. I forgot about these in the pantry and they started to grow slips so I just dumped them in a box with some seedling mixed soil and they started to root in really really quickly. So I'm planning to just give them a little bit longer to develop a little bit more leaf structure and then I'm going to cut them off and clean out a bed and pop them in. This is our strawberry and blueberry bed and it is a little bit windy today so I'm hoping that the audio is okay. I feel like I should protect the mic a little bit. But as you can see, this is the definition of my cup runth over. I cannot get over how much growth there has been in this bed since, oh, when would it have been? Maybe August last year. And it's, as I said, the 2nd of March. So the, I, there's no way I thought the few little strawberry plants that we put in this bed would be enough to overflow to this degree. I have been saying that I need to deal with this for a while, much like the poor fruit trees that are still sitting in pots and have been sitting in pots all summer. But it, life happens in the order that it happens. Um, and also I thought, well, what I would do is wait for these to root into the ground a little bit. And then when I build the new strawberry bed, um, I will actually just take some of these and transplant them over. Um, and we'll just see how we go. But I'm thinking now that maybe I'll just have three beds of strawberries. I don't know. This is crazy. This is crazy. Um, but I'm really, really happy with how much growth we have seen. This is our herb bed. We planted this up together like it feels like about four or five weeks ago and already there's an insane amount of growth. It's totally filled up from when we cleaned it out. The lettuce is obviously bolted, the Rebecca is about to go, the herbs are totally buried but everything looks really happy. The only thing I am unhappy about with this bed is when I first planted here, there's an invasive lily that lives in the area um, and grows quite rapidly in the area because we live on a river line and by river I really mean stream. Um, but there was some invasive lilies just here at the bottom of the stairs. We dug them up, got rid of them, 
and put a thick layer of cardboard down underneath this bed hoping that that would be enough if they ever reappeared any that have appeared except there are I see there are a couple there now that I need to get to um, I have actually sprayed with Roundup um, because they are so invasive and unfortunately a couple have popped through this bed so it's not great but the bed's doing well and that's really all that matters we did actually film a video recently of us cleaning out this garden bed together. There were so many overgrown plants in here and some that had reached their season's end, but unfortunately it's one of the five or six videos that have disappeared into I don't know where, whether it was a corrupt SD card or a missing SD card, but unfortunately it is gone. But you can see this area has come along and filled in nicely from when I cleaned it out and just replaced it with some new tiny seedlings. We do still have um, some a status that needs some more pruning but the coral amaranth which we planted together which was already in bloom at the time has put on quite a lot of growth and we've got some beautiful coral flowers we have also got a little lemon on that uh, eureka lemon tree that we pruned together and so far no signs of any more huge thorns which is so exciting you can see our Achillegia or Columbine is doing beautifully as well. At this point in the season, just about all of the zinnias have some sort of powdery mildew on them, but that doesn't really matter. They're still blooming beautifully and I just pull off the leaves if I'm going to take them in for inside for a um, arrangement and we're still getting beautiful tansy flowers, although I seriously need to prune this guy because it is basically cousin it but it's doing we're doing really well in here we've got some beautiful dark purple straw flowers and some um, white globe amaranth and some beautiful hot pink amaranth and um, I'm pretty sure that this is actually a celosia which generally I don't like celosias but I love these ones because I think they're called um, like flamingo tail or something like that they have this beautiful fluffy spire and it's absolutely gorgeous but I'm really excited with this bed although I wish I had done a better job of staking so that the height gradient in the garden bed was a little bit better and as you can see I desperately need to edge this garden but I actually want to extend it out a little bit further but I think this is a, a job for winter. In these front garden beds we've got a beautiful uh, I think this is a ladybird um, nasturtium that has finally come to the party but the potatoes are dying back which again was on the list of things to deal with this weekend but due to the hand injury that has been postponed we haven't seen much of a, an emergence of the dahlias we planted together last week because I forgot about them and left them in the garage. Most of them had sprouted if I bothered to plant them this late in the season, um, but a couple of them are, are emerging, but most are not. On the plus side, the Cafe Ole dahlia that oh, was producing some beautiful flowers before we had 280 something mils of rain in one day. Um, it seems to be re-emerging and trying <laughs> trying life again. All my other dahlias rotted. It just is what it is. I have dabbled a little bit with ugh, this netting that uh, my mum gave me and it looks like it is not just blackbirds that have been eating my tomatoes. Every time I see the blackbirds, I send the puppies out to chase them away, which is a very effective deterrent, but I am yet to get one pineapple uh, tomato because although this one's, I guess, split instead of being attacked, obviously the bush rats and mice are getting in and under the netting because I just casually draped it over and they seem to really want the pineapple tomatoes, which is offensive because I also want to try the pineapple tomatoes, but looks like anything that's even vaguely close to ripe, which nothing was when I um, went to leave for work for the last couple of days. Everything that was vaguely ripe is gone. 
Beside our potatoes, we have got what I think from memory are pineapple tomatoes that I planted really not that long ago. And behind them, we have got yellow romas. The yellow romas, um, I have mostly been trying to pick them when they're green and looking relatively fully developed because the blackbirds want these ones really, really bad. So I've just got my first lot that are ripening inside and they're just a beautiful kind of pineapple colored um, yellow and they don't really look as much like a Roma as I thought they would, but perhaps that's because I've had to pick them early to protect them from the blackbirds. But we've got some beautiful basil coming along well. At the front of this garden bed, we've got the, some residual poppies and uh, some chives and mostly some zinnias. One of the things that has been most productive in this garden, although I should say that because, but is also one of the more stabby things in this garden, which is, that's my sore hand. Um, a lot to say when you have a garden with roses is, oh, this round zucchini plant. So it's got a couple of things in there that need to get harvested, but I kind of love these zucchinis. Not because they taste particularly different to any other zucchini, but just for the novelty factor and they kind of look like a giant apple growing in your garden bed. Um, so I like them from that perspective. And they've also just really productive. Not that a zucchini is ever minimally productive, but I just enjoy the novelty of a round zucchini. So this garden bed has done really, really well. The yellow romas, so, so, so productive. So if I can find a way to next season protect my tomatoes from blackbirds, which is not an issue I've ever had before, then it'll be amazing. Like the amount of potatoes, I keep wanting to say potatoes, I mean tomatoes. The amount of tomatoes I would harvest if the blackbirds weren't a thing would be unreal. The other issue we have had, and I keep wanting to call them worms, but they're not worms, is caterpillars in the tomatoes, so many. And this late in the season, we're also having fruit flies. So earlier in the season with my first rounds of harvest, I was just chucking them in the freezer until I was ready to deal with them. I am not doing them now because even the ones that don't look like they've been bitten by fruit fly, sometimes you cut into them and there's some little wiggly worms in there. So. Oh. So we are losing a number to the caterpillars and even more to the fruit fly and to the blackbirds, but I guess that's what happens when you live in an area where there's a lot of bird life and ultimately I would prefer to live with the birds and have them eat some of my tomatoes than be back in the concrete jungle and not have the sheer joy of hearing the bird song every single day that we get and watching the willy wagtails wiggle their butt as they zoom in the garden beds and eat the bugs. I've had a really low bug, uh, apart from the caterpillars, bug season. Like there hasn't been slugs, there hasn't been snails, there hasn't been as much of aphids. And I think the aphids is also because I planted a few um, Brussels sprouts and left them around as a trap crop and that's been extremely effective but also all the tiny finches in this area they're always zooming in and out eating bugs so I'm loving the little finch help and the willy bag tails they're just so cute and so helpful but got to protect the fruit. For the purposes of orientation we've got our bird and mouse and rat attacked pineapple tomatoes here, our potatoes that need harvesting here and our yellow romas here. We have a lot of carrots that are in flower here that I I need to harvest some of the seeds but the trouble is I'm allergic or slash sensitive to carrots now so I don't know how much point there is in saving them. A lot of the marigolds in here have died back. The apple cucumber has died back. There is a dahlia and some zinnias at the front of the bed that are looking pretty rough and could need a prune but like all of this needs to get pulled. So this bed is pretty much done. But this urn is looking amazing. 
This is an urn that I got from my parents' place. They weren't using it, so my dad brought it down for me. Um, it has taken this urn a long time to get going. So we have a beautiful Mystic Spires um, salvia in the middle. These are some yellow billy buttons. Um, they produced one flower. We've got some globe amaranth. We've got some aquilegia. We have some uh, snapdragons that were kind of like a red color that have really failed to launch um, and there were some petunias which never did anything and some pansies which looked fabulous in here but they long ago died so it'll be interesting to see how this goes through autumn I have zero plans to do anything about it prior to winter and we'll just see how it goes and um, try some different combinations next year all the other garden beds are in more or less the same state as the ones you've seen. Some of them I've started to turn over. A lot of them still have tomatoes actively growing in them. Some are looking a bit more rubbish than the others. And some are like the carrot bed, ready to be ripped out and started again. Obviously there's a lot of things like this salvia and this dead one <laughs> that could use some maintenance. That is, the same is true for the urn, but there's a limit to what I can do with the time we've got and I'm hoping that next year, next summer season, um, number one, I'll be a bit more organized. So there's a couple of things I have learnt from this season and this garden and growing in these garden beds for the first time um, that I will apply to next season. So one of those things is that I'm just gonna have a dedicated onion space. I sort of loosely tried the um, a square foot gardening method without actually reading the book um, because I didn't have time because we were moving um, but so I roughly kind of integrated everything and companion planted everything but I really think that onions need their own space and not to run the risk of being shaded by anything so that's one of the things I will be doing next year and I think I will be doing more planning in winter about where I'm going to put my tomatoes so that hopefully I can get the support systems and support structures set up early so that they're not half flopped over by midsummer slash the end of summer because we do also get a lot of wind um, which leads me to the next thing I'm going to show you which is something that if my hand wasn't messed up I would already have already have attended to. I also already attended to this last week. So this is hoop number three or what do you want to call this? Archway number three? This should be four. The fourth one is on the floor and it is the one where my climbing roses were doing really really well but it is on the floor. My climbing roses do need a bit of maintenance, so I had ordered some more tomato clips to clip them up. And, oh, that one's broken, probably from the second fall. Um, and I was gonna do a little bit of deadheading, but with my busted hand, it's not happening this weekend, just like propping this up is not gonna happen this weekend. So I did reprop this up last weekend, as I said. We haven't had a lot of wind by our standards, but it's enough that this has come down again. So. Obviously I need to do something else about it. The roses are looking pretty happy, so I'm just gonna be careful because they're pretty stabby. Um, they don't seem to be worried about being on the floor. They've actually started to angle up towards the sun, which is totally fine. Um, this is actually going to be a lot easier position for me to uh, tame the roses and encourage them over and train them um, the way I want them to curve over the archway. And I'm really happy with how much growth they've put on this year and how healthy they've been. And that so far, I haven't seen any black spot on them but the plan is to bang some star pickets into the ground and anchor them onto the star pickets so I do actually have the star pickets in the right size uh, but that's how I injured my hand so I went to the hardware store two days ago and I got really long star pickets because I'm gonna try um, a bird proofing idea that I have using the super tall star pickets and as I pushed them onto my trolley some, there was a sharp corner on one and it just slipped and cut right through my hand um, so I'm pretty concerned about infection um, 
but I don't want to be dealing with any more star pickets this weekend. So I'm just going to leave them here. I might deal with them tomorrow. Depends how my hand is looking tomorrow. Um, I'm currently airing it while we're outside, but then I'm going to go in and, and restrap it. One of the benefits of having experience in the field of patch repair. Um, but as you can see back here, everything's looking pretty green, pretty overgrown and desperately in need of a mow, a maintenance trim slash training and a little bit of a lift. If we wrap up this half of the garden, <laughs> there's a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot to do. These roses have grown so strangely. <laughs> I haven't, to be fair, deadheaded anything because I haven't had time. Um, the black spot is progressing through here, but I can't say that I'm that worried after the experience I had with the blue moon rose, where if I just pruned off the leaves, it was fine. And if I pruned off all the leaves, it was fine. Um, but holy mackerel, this Munstead, I think it's, yeah, Munstead Wood, um, David Austin, rose which has the most beautiful scent and color it is thorny so i'm putting off getting in there again this was a job that was gonna get gonna happen this weekend but like you can see how ridiculously they've grown so this is the height of one half of the princess charlene de monaco uh, blush rose which i think is a david austin let's have a look Oh, can't see. Anyway, so this is the height of one half and the other half has just taken off to the side and I'm pretty sure Birdie has scratched her eye recently on this rose, which is not ideal. So they all need to be pruned and tidied up. On the plus side, the hybrid roses, while being riddled with plague, are a beautiful shape and size. So, you know, you win some, you lose some. And it's my first year growing roses, so whatever. We learn, we see how they go. This is a thornless blackberry. It was supplied as a dormant root that wasn't even a stick, really. Um, <laughs> you can see how crazy the growth is in this. Um, it is in a small birdies raised garden bed with just berry soil, which is an acidic soil. And you can see that I have achieved absolutely zero in terms of coming up with a staking strategy. Um, I'm just happy to see that so far it remains true to its name and that it's just thornless. That's, you know, that's really all I'm looking for at this point. This is also something else I have never grown before. This is asparagus, Mary Washington asparagus. And it's been in interesting to watch how it grows and to see the little, um, spears come out of the ground and then to see them turn into these furry monsters and then to see them get uh, these little um, fruits, uh, what are they called, common brain, berries on them and just to see what becomes of them. Uh, I'm a little surprised that the birds aren't interested in the berries but that's okay so I've just cracked one open. Anything interesting inside? Some seeds cool. Um, but so they're in with some tomatoes. The tomatoes are nearing the end of their life because they were super romas that I planted early, early. Um, but yeah, these are looking pretty massive and I need to do some research about when it's an appropriate time to cut these back for the season. But you can see over here and in front with the roses, these are total shambles and I still need to deal with this area. And that's before we even get on to oh, that. Let's show you this. As you can possibly tell, this area has not been mowed in some time. And that's because it was housing all the fruit trees that I am yet to decide where they're going. Um, and, and there were a ton of bricks here as well um, and a bunch of other products and as I've gradually moved them, the grass has exploded and now it's a mess. Uh, so I do need to deal with this, but more than anything, I need to determine where the cherry trees are going to go, where the maple trees are going to go, because my original plans have changed. Um, and I want to make sure that I keep the um, fruit trees in the middle, away from Possum Highway on the fence line, but I also want to maintain some yard, but well, we'll see. We've also got a ornamental pear tree that needs to go in the ground and some yellow and red twig dogwoods. A lot of maintenance, a lot of maintenance that needs to be done. A lot of mowing 
that needs to be done, a lot of whippersnippering that needs to be done, but I hate whippersnippering, which is part of the reason why I've got all the mulch around the beds to minimize the whippersnippering. But hmm, there's a lot of work to be done around here. Anyway, let's take you across to the other side of the garden. There's a lot I need to do to make this garden nicer, but it's the end of summer, it's going to look pretty scraggly. But there are things like hiding this hideous fence line that I would like to do, but I just haven't had time. I am both amazed by how much and how little I have achieved in the time we've been in this house, which is not very long. But the plants are doing really well and I don't think that has anything to do with me. I think that is just down to how amazing nature is and that if you give it a little bit of nice soil and give it some water, it'll go off like a rocket and even then it'll probably still do it even if you don't. Um, this is a yellow raspberry. I'm yet to see any berries, but I'm sure the birds will be right in there to get them. These marigolds have gone bonkers again. So I need to get in here and deal with them again because I can see that they are actually dropping seeds everywhere again, which I guess to be fair is what they're supposed to do. Now, I don't know if you guys remember, but we planted, holy mackerel, there's some marigold seeds that have been dropped in there. Okay, so maybe tomorrow, um, that we planted in here um, some spaghetti squash and if we planted them so late in the season that I was like, nothing's gonna happen. Well, oh, look at this guy, so stabby. But this is just one of about three that I have seen, which is probably not a lot for three spaghetti squash plants. But I'm impressed given like how late in the season I planted these. So they've taken off like rockets. The beans that are in here are rubbish, just like the beans we pulled out last week. So you win some, you lose some. Squash bug, don't eat my dahlias, rude. Oh, what is wrong with my forsythia? Well, we just discovered my forsythia is looking sad. And I know that this is looking messy, but I didn't want to come out and like tidy it up just so you guys get a false idea of, of how things are looking and how I am managing this all by myself. Um, this is the reality, it is a mess. And I am keen for summer to be over and very excited that we are now technically in autumn, but that's more about wanting the humidity to go away. So these are my privacy trees and they have grown beautifully. They are supposed to put on about a meter of growth per season. When I got them and they were in the pots, they were about here on me. So you can see they've put on a great amount of growth, but I'm gonna show you the other ones that are further up on the side, um, protecting the view into the house. And they have grown so, 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 so much. These purple lamiums that are here have created a beautiful ground cover, which again, I need to edge. Um, but, but they have survived Rafa bouncing around in here looking for lizards on a daily basis. So they have done incredibly well, all things considered. I need to stake this guy up because he keeps flopping over. But everything through here in terms of the perennials is looking really great, except for the Forsythia I just saw that's looking a little bit rough. And then we have got a, a couple of Lobelia back here and our snowball viburnum. This bed is a bit of a mix of recently planted dahlias, whoops, to plant them so late, and um, some tomatoes that are just getting ravaged by birds. This is a bed I almost never touch because the, what's it called, silver beet has been sitting here for 600 years, so it's kind of bit funny looking now and I also don't really know what to do with silver beet when I can't eat dairy anymore so it is what it is we also have a ton of carrots in this bed which I don't know what to do with because I'm allergic to them the dogs will only eat so many of them uh, I do have a friend that 
has a horse, so I might actually call her and ask her if she wants a donation of carrots. Um, but they do seem to be still quite little, so I'm just gonna let them sit there and see what they do. This area is basically a dog highway. So whatever is planted here needs to be relatively hardy. These are giant Russian um, sunflowers grown from the seeds of ones we had earlier in the season and they're doing pretty well. I only put them in like maybe 10 days ago. So I was a bit slow. And here we have the rest of the pitosporums. I know some people call them pitosporums, but I just can't do that. Um, and they have grown a lot. So these were the smaller ones that were kind of more up to here on me when we got them. And I'm gonna take you down the side and show you how tall some of the other ones are. And some of the flowers in the little um, garden bed we have just underneath the window here. And then we're gonna wrap this up because I am getting mauled by mosquitoes and my alarm just beeped to tell me that dinner is ready and Birdie is yelling at me probably saying she wants her dinner. So let's have a look at everything. And I really appreciate you guys hanging out with us in the garden. And I apologize about the dog. And thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.